Prem 9 has been developed toward ends of very different breadth and distance. First, to learn more about what we can learn by looking at the numerical aspects of data in more than two aspects at a time. Second, gaining a tool for pictorial examination and dissection of particle physics data, especially data involving several body final states. PRIM-9 has grown through many stages, but the evolution of display systems, like the evolution of animals, is a branching process. And so some of the abilities that are vestigial in PRIM-9 may later turn out to be central for other display systems. We begin this historical video with a clip of John Tukey from the PRIM-9 movie. Because the PRIM-9 interactive data display and analysis system created by Fisher, Keller, Friedman, and Tukey in 1973 clearly is the seminal event in the history of statistical graphics. It established statistical graphics as a research area and it contained, albeit in rudimentary form, many ideas that were drawn upon in later work. Our historical video gives an overview of statistical computer graphics research of the past 30 years. There is no attempt to be comprehensive in featuring all the wealth of research developed in these years, but rather the material contained in this video highlights what we feel are some of the main conceptual advances in the field. Neither are the selections an attempt to assign priority or credit to individual researchers. Many researchers have made significant contributions to the field of statistical graphics, and if you are interested in learning more, the Statistical Graphics section of the American Statistical Association maintains a lending library of videos demonstrating the spectrum of this research. The development of statistical graphics was driven to a significant extent by general advances in computer hardware and user interface design. We will point out these computing advances as we show clips from videos demonstrating various statistical graphic systems. PRIM9 is used as a reference in our history because PRIM9 formed a focal point for initiating computer graphics as a research field in statistics. PRIM9 was an interactive computer graphic system for picturing, rotation, isolation, and masking up to nine dimensions. Plots were displayed on an idiom vector scope driven by a Varian 620 mini computer. The Varian was connected through a parallel link to an IBM 390 mainframe, which performed most of the computations. Controls to the graphical tools were a set of 32 hardware buttons. When PRIM9 was up and running, it so monopolized the computing power of the IBM mainframe that other computing jobs ground to a standstill. The basic ideas for later graphical research were for the most part encompassed in PRIM9. Picturing meant showing two-dimensional projections. Rotation allowed arbitrary two-dimensional projections rather than variables viewed pairwise. Isolation allowed points to be erased so that the analyst could focus attention on subsets of the original data. And masking was effectively conditioning the view based on a third hidden variable. Note that the PRIM9 display emphasizes the scatter plot as the main plotting method. It is important to realize that PRIM9 didn't arise in a vacuum. These next two clips illustrate work done at AT&T Bell Labs. Chang's tape displays interactive three-dimensional rotation of five-dimensional data. He used the tool to find one structured two-dimensional projection embedded in three additional dimensions of noise. This attempt predated the rotation shown in PRIM9 and is a precursor to subsequent techniques for searching high dimensions for structured projections either automatically or with user control.
Kruskal's tape displays an animation of multidimensional scaling, showing the successive repositioning of points to find the layout that best represents their proximity in multivariate space. This system, involving visualization of a statistical algorithm, contrasts an automatic approach with the interactive one employed by Chang and Prim9. The next major hardware and user interface development can be seen in work by McDonald in the mid-80s. In this clip, we see the raster graphics display screen of a single user workstation operating a window system with three plotting windows visible. The left window displays a geographic image of the region around Manaus, Brazil, showing the confluence of two rivers. The upper river is the Rio Negro, and the lower one is the Rio Solimoes. The top scatter plot shows bands one and two from a satellite, and the bottom scatter plot shows bands three and four. This is an example of an implementation of linked brushing between multiple views. Color brushing in one view automatically changes the color of corresponding points in the other views. The realization was done using an object-oriented programming language in an environment where visualization was fully integrated. The conceptualization of identifying cases and linked brushing between plots arose in work by Newton in 1976. The catalyst for her ideas was hands-on data analysis. She worked on an IMLAC vector-based terminal connected to a mainframe via a serial line. In a setup closer in taxonomy to that used for PRIM9 than the single user workstation used by McDonald. The last section of our video concentrates on work from the early 90s. XGOBI, like many other software packages now available, combines the graphical techniques we have discussed and delivers them into the hands of the masses of Unix X window system users. It provides a one window interface filled with control buttons, scroll bars, and pull down menus for ease of use. Linked brushing and identification are available between multiple windows. The Grand Tour, conceived by Asimov in 1985, is also implemented in XGOBI. This rotation method reflects a return to the original motivation of using motion to view arbitrary projections, but it provides a fully representative selection of views, which the Chang and Prim9 systems did not. We note that the graphics in XGOBI are based on scatter plots, just as in PRIM9. A wealth of graphical research has been based on univariate plotting methods, such as histograms and box plots, which we have not done justice to in this historical compilation. This grand tour is of the seven-dimensional particle data, which was first analyzed in PRIM9. The seven colors represent interesting subsets of the data found by an automatic search algorithm, which XGOBI visualizes for the user. The data takes a simple geometric form. Prim 9 is now ready to examine and dissect particle physics data. Its direct value for this purpose will have to be learned by experience. What have we learned from its development beyond a reasoned conviction that pictorial systems to be effective must go through many stages of trial and error learning as it did? What have we learned that will be useful at other locations? We now understand that the details of control can make or break such a system. We now recognize that these details of control must be adapted 
to what is available and to the people who are to use the system. If we had had 10 knobs and six switches instead of 32 buttons and a light pen, we could and would have realized the same four essentials in a quite different way. We now recognize the great value of such dynamic aspects of the display, especially easily recognizable rotation. Two aspects, horizontal and vertical, are always before us. What third aspect supports them best? We now have a strong feeling, almost but not quite a conviction, that the dynamic aspects of rotation are extremely valuable, more useful than stereoscopy, color, flicker, or distinctive characters. We have learned that this sort of pictorial facility can be useful in two quite different ways. First, directly, and second, as a source of ideas and approaches. Ideas and approaches that can guide algorithms for experimental programs to chew over numerical data in a batch mode. The first of these chewing over programs is now in an advanced state of development. Others can be expected to follow. Finally, and above all, we have learned that the four essentials of picturing, rotation, isolation, and masking need to work together, and that from them we can learn much.